Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to do some sounds from my inbox, which is where I check out some smaller bands who have emailed me and asked me to look at their works. We're going to kick this off with a returnee to the project. This is Jetpack. We checked them out a while ago with a collaboration with, I think it was Spiral Hill. Uh, the song was called Greek Gods. And I thought it was an interesting combination of hip-hop and alternative rock. We're going to be checking out a brand new single from them. This one is called Tomorrow Today and features Mon Wage. Let's dive in, see what Jetpack is bringing to the table today. Tomorrow today, I live the same day. I run, I get paid. We stop by this, I get Yeah, the back to back rhymes, rhymes at the end of each line is nice. And I keep walking like I'm falling because I'm losing my faith. I got moves to make silently, not slow. I design my fate everywhere I go. Intentionally seeing blurries, compunctions just like curry. And I try to not worry until in the cemetery. It's a really interesting production put on the vocals. I was kind of hoping we had a a beat switch up. There's a little bit of variation on this verse though, which is nice. Nice volume contrast. Like a synth uh, solo in here. This is nice. Yeah, did not have much of the alternative rock thing going on with it, which makes me think that maybe that was something that Spiral Hill brought to the table, or it's possible that that was something that was explored just for that track, and this one needed a different vibe. And I do think that this ended up working well. The background music instrumental stuff is very light, uh, the distorted guitar that we heard last time in Greek Gods, I don't think would have brought the same lightness, dexterity. Ah, dexterity is the wrong word. A, not really. It's just a lack of weight, I think, is primarily what's going on here. It feels like uh, drifting. There is the word I want. Just sort of floating and drifting, right? The song just sort of moves into the next ideas. Everything seems sort of effortless and fluid. And that's something a distorted guitar, I think, doesn't really bring to the table. So it's possible that it was uh, intentionally done um, in this way and that it was actually Jetpack who brings that alternative rock sound to Greek gods but wanted something specifically different for this track. And why I think that that sound works well is that when we look at the chorus to this track, 
I said there was an interesting production. There's a lot of reverb on it, and the vocal delivery is done in a very slurry kind of way. A lot of the syllables just kind of blur into one another. There aren't strict stopping points. There's no hard staccato sounds to it. The sounds just move from one syllable to the next, blurring the lines of when one starts and the other begins. When one stops and the other begins. And when we mix that with the the large amount of reverb, it embellishes and exaggerates that blurriness. It makes all of the notes sort of just blend together. And it creates a blurriness. And I think that's what the song's really going on about. The few lines I picked up, at least from the chorus, sort of makes it seem like this uh, this character, or whatever the person, whether it's you know a first person or a narration kind of style story. This this person though just goes through life. Every day is the same. Is sort of the vibe I'm getting from it. And having this sort of blurriness to the lyrics, having them seep together. It's sort of like how days begin to blur together when they all become the same. You just kind of do it. There aren't any points where you're like, this is specifically my Friday. It's like, no, this is just like every other day. My memory of them is sort of congealing into just one memory of a single day that I keep reliving. That's sort of what it feels like to me. I think it's interesting then that the verse pushes in a little bit of a different direction and brings in some rhythmic syncopation. It brings in some staccato attacks. Um, in fact, we kick it off with some very directed, pointed rhythmic ideas. The very first verse. So I'm curious if there is a purpose to that or if it's simply a stylistic thing where Jetpack and Mon Wage have very different delivery styles and flows. But it is a, a point of... Uh, contrast I noticed immediately on this track. One other thing that I generally enjoyed about this was the rhythmic flow and uh, rhyme scheme that we saw in the verses, primarily that first verse and the first like eight or ten lines. I really enjoyed that. We had the recurring syllable at the Third to last and final syllable of each of the uh, lines is just a really cool way to have this double punctuation at the end of every sentence. I thought that was pretty cool to go about it. And it also led us into the next group of rhymes because I think it was like that ninth or tenth line. We ended up having a soft rhyme away from that hard A sound. Um, what else? Hard A and I forget what the consonant was with it. Uh, and transitioning towards where we were heading in the future is very well done from a linguistic area. And I appreciated that. So the vocal delivery, uh, I thought, was very good on both the verse and the chorus here. And of course, we had a variation on our second verse, which introduced some new musical ideas. We also had some new rhythmic concepts coming out of our vocalist on that second verse. And our third chorus had some variation there as well as um, the vocals were even more distant, more blurry, or pushed into the background as it was part of the fade out. We also had a musical interlude in there with the synth lead melody, which I thought was pretty awesome. I don't hear that too often in hip hop, so I was happy to, uh, to hear a little bit of that. Let me see if I can find some lyrics for this, and then we'll keep this video rolling. So I was kind of right about the lyrics. Granted, I only picked up a few of them, but the chorus is about living the same day over and over, allowing it to blur together, but it's about something more than that. It's about a drive to get through this. It's not that life is boring, it's just that life is hard. The chorus says, I run, I get paid, I'm, wa I'm waking up late, tomorrow, today, I live the same day. Verse 1 has a line says, Got moves to make, silently not slow. I design my fate everywhere I go. Verse 2 says, Made it clear we won't settle for regular. If it ain't about a check, don't hit my cellular. Life got hard, ain't what it seems. Pour out my heart, gotta succeed. It's a song about the day-to-day -day grind 
hustling to get your art off the ground so that you can be a big artist, so that your life can improve. Yeah, that does mean some of your days are going to blur together. You may end up doing the same boring stuff over and over and over, but it's all in service to this larger goal that you hope all this hard work will pay off one day by achieving. Yeah, I can get behind that. There's also, I love the end of the chorus though. It says, link up with Wage, like in WoW, we fit in a raid. Oh man, I wonder if they play well. Uh, for those who don't know, that's World of Warcraft. It is probably the most popular online game in the world. And one of the things you can do in it is find 39 other players and take on these epic like multi-hour long dungeons with like lots of bosses and stuff and they call them raids that's pretty funny all right next up we have a group called lichtspiel house i hope i pronounced that correctly it translates out to cinema which is pretty cool uh the email states that they're a small Austrian progressive death metal band. I'm like, okay, I can get behind Prague Death. And then they said some jazz influence. And I was like, okay, now I'm really interesting. Re really interested. And then they said that they try to create unique songs. And I was sold. I knew we had to check these uh, this group out. I forgot to look up the pronunciation of the title it is probably not trumer though it might be that is a very american pronunciation of those letters t-r-u-e-m-m-e-r -E -E let's see what's going on with this group Okay, this is real fun already. Lovely bass tone, fun harmonies, neat rhythms. Oh, what? playfulness of both instruments. Even the drums have a nice, I uh, like, melodic feel to them. Hit triplets, or was that a tempo shift? Okay, yeah, that's perfect triplet. All right. Yeah, rhythmic accent shifting. Interesting clarity to the entire mix, especially on the vocals.
all the time. Field shifts are nice. So we're in a seven. Really dry sounding toms. I like it though. The toms have a very unique color to them. Yeah, really eclectic uh, group. I kind of dig it. There's interesting choices everywhere, from the composition to the performance to the production of it. I think the production is the one that took me the longest to acclimate to. The composition is interesting at almost every moment we start off with some really spicy ideas between the guitar and bass the drums have some uh some very cool ideas uh to play under them as well never really sticking with something that's just uh in the pocket a very functional drum idea there's a lot of really melodic drumming ideas in our opening couple of minutes i guess just our opening minute huh um, but we have this beautiful duet, this intertwined dance between the bass and the guitar right at the start of this track. Constantly dancing around each other. One instrument holds out a note, so the other one moves into a little flourish. They hold out a note. The other, the other instrument comes in and plays over that. It's just this beautiful dance between the two of them. Sometimes even going off at the same time, having this uh, beautiful counterpoint with harmony. I really love it, and it has such a unique feel to it because of whatever key they're in. It's... Uh, Definitely something I don't hear too often with metal guitar and bass. So I appreciate that entire deal we had there at the beginning. Just a, a wonderful way to kick the song off. Um, and a great way to introduce some of the less stereotypical sounds from all three of our instrumentals. Or sorry, all three of our instruments, our musicians. From here, though, we pushed into more of a typical metal sound. 
Uh, the guitar switched to some heavy riffing with some chords in it. The bass continued on with pretty much what they were doing, <laughs> just to a little bit lesser of a degree as far as movement is concerned. And the drums do kick into something a bit more uh, traditional as well in their patterns and rhythms. We do hear some nice flourishes from them and some cool melodic ideas, but we also shift into having more of the the quarter notes being accented at least, although this of course gets subverted everywhere in the song as I talk, you know, as I said a couple of times, we'll have two or three repetitions of a phrase where they lay out specific um, points of accent. And then in like the set, the second to last or even the last repetition of an idea, they'll completely shift around where the accent points are and disrupt the feeling of that idea entirely. We also have those moments where we shift from uh, four, uh, sorry, from sixteenth notes to triplet eighth notes in order to make the song feel like it slows down just a hair bit, but not exactly halfway down, moving to standard eighth notes, which would just feel like half time. It's this medium point that feels like we've actually lost time rather than have shifted to half. Or in some, you know, sometimes when we get faster, we go double time. There's something about half time and double time that just feel natural. Whereas anytime we shift to a triplet vibe, my first instinct is, what just happened? <laughs> Everything else just feels uh, expected. I, something about cutting things in half and doubling, like the, the instant symmetry of that, that just feels different than any other type of uh, metric modulation. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's there's some stuff that pushes more into the realm of what I expect from this sound, but it's played around with and accentuated by elements that push against that and explore other ideas. And I really like this back and forth there, getting to hear uh, a bit of their, their more influenced, in influenced style of writing and their more experimental side and how they work off of each other in order to build the structure of the song, the flow of it all, which I think uh, the majority of the time works well. The way that they move into and out of the experimental concepts always feels natural, at least as far as metal goes. I know there's quite a few very harsh transitions into and out of ideas. They don't always work for me, but it's kind of a, it's a piece of metal, right? The genre does a lot with uh, harsh transitions, and we do have a few of them in here, which feel right for the style, but it's not an exclusive style of transition that they use, and I appreciate that as well. The vocalist also gets to show off a little bit here. We kick off immediately with some clean vocals. I was kind of hoping we would have just cleans throughout, but we do get the harshes. And in a very interesting twist, the harshes are very prominent in the mix. In fact, they feel like a space has been carved out for them, and I can even hear the space around them. There's almost no bleed over between the vocal presence and any other instrument, and it allows me to hear what is the vocal technique more clearly than pretty much any harsh vocal uh, performance I've heard at all on this channel. It is wild just how clear and present the vocals are in here, given that metal just kind of doesn't do that. So it was cool to hear that, hear some of that natural compression and me trying to envision how I might go about accomplishing that. I've been trying to do harshes in my own music and I am nowhere near up to this skill level. But uh, it was neat to be able to hear that so I could at least try to envision what's going on muscle-wise and for me to... What I'm saying is I'll be listening to this later, <laughs> trying to isolate the vocal technique and mimic it. Um, anything else in here? I do think it went on just a hair bit long for my taste, especially since we seem to, at the midpoint of the song, loop the entire thing over again. Maybe the lyrics were changed, maybe there were some minute changes to the song compositionally, but from what I picked up, it's very similar. We went through a similar progression of ideas as well. We kicked off with the clean vocals, uh, and we went through many of the same, um, not just sections, but even 
what sounded to me as riffs and even vocal rhythms. But that could just be that progressive death metal is not usually my cup of tea, so I might be a bit more picky about it, and it might be that other people really enjoyed this. Uh, my last thing I want to touch on is the production, which I found to be very uncompressed, which was great for me. I got to hear every instrument. I already talked about how you know present the vocals were, but I do think it might hurt their ability for people to immediately click with them. But I, I understand we're going to get a little bit into sound physics for a second, which is not necessarily where my education was. So let me know if I get any of this wrong, but I think I'm going to be in the general park for my uh, conversation that I'm going to come off of this. So when we talk about consonant harmony, we talk about sound waves that work well with each other. There's very little clashing in the sound waves themselves. When we talk about metal, we talk about distortion, which is kind of, in a sense, a, a sort of crumpled up sound wave. That's probably not the best way to go about describing it. It's probably a better way to do it, but that's kind of how I envision it. You're destroying a lot of it and adding a lot of static into it. And the static, to me, I don't know how it's visualized in waveform, but it's a lot of auditory noise. And you're also using overdrive amplification to maximize all of this, which is going to amplify it. So when you mix in the amplification and the crackly noise, the white noise stuff, and then you use notes that are a bit spicy, that aren't perfectly balanced, all of that noise is going to amplify the dissonance of the harmony. And that's why we don't usually see a lot of jazzy stuff with heavy distorted guitars because it's really difficult to make it sound good. Usually your bands that are probably in the progressive metal realm who are using spicier ideas tend to also back off on the distortion and the compression and the overdrive and go for a cleaner distorted sound so that they don't have to worry about the extra layer of clashing. It's also why a lot of the genres that use heavy overdrive also use power chords, which are extremely stable chords. It's your root and your octave. They go hand in hand because you're just multiplying the something by two. I don't know if you're, I don't know if it's the phase. Anyways, it's, it's like a perfect doubling. So they just line up really well. There's pretty much no, uh, distortion there. Again, I, I'm not a physicist. <laughs> And then the, the note in the middle of your root and your octave is the fifth. And the fifth is exceptionally stable against the root. In fact, it is the most stable interval other than the root and the octave because they're just, you know, they're the same note, just one's higher pitched. And so when you have this stack of super stable sounds, there's pretty much no warble in there to amplify which is why power chords work so well with heavily distorted guitars. Um, where I'm taking all this is the production in here is exceptionally clean. There's very little compression. The instruments have plenty of space. It's almost produced in a way that I would expect of pop or jazz. Now I say jazz specifically because there's a lot of jazzy ideas in here and the extra space really helps with that. Um, some of the spicy ideas can come across a little cleaner and more digestible uh, without the extra clutter. So you kind of have to have a clean sound in order to play these really cool ideas, but it also feels like it just isn't heavy enough. It, it's not filling up all the space like I... I kind of assume death metal does. And part of that is me bringing in bias and expectation from the genre to it. But I also think that this isn't unusual. I wonder if there isn't a better medium point where maybe people who are accustomed to death metal might still enjoy this and they won't be turned away by the initial sound. As I mentioned at the very beginning, the production was the thing that took me the longest to get accustomed to on this track. And it is the one that felt the most 
odd to me. Although I also come from a jazz background, so some of those jazzier ideas might feel a bit more natural to me than a metalhead, and maybe it's the harmony that's more difficult for some people to get into. But it was something that stood out to me immediately on this track. Um, so I guess uh, Lickspielhaus, if you're watching, I'm not necessarily saying you should change the production, but it might be something to experiment with uh, going forward, unless you just absolutely love the way this sounds, in which case I don't think it sounds bad. It just doesn't quite feel like metal, if that makes sense. I'm going to see if I can find some lyrics and then we'll push forward. Well, I couldn't find any lyrics, but I'm kind of a little upset. I did discover something that is pretty cool, that they have a full band playthrough. And now I kind of wish I had watched this. I should have dug a little bit deeper rather than just grabbing uh, the other video of theirs, but I will probably give this a listen later because I think that's pretty cool. And I think that they have a lot of musicianship going on in their, uh, their playing that I would like to hear an expansion of those ideas. So since we don't have lyrics, we're going to be moving on. Uh, the next track we have is from a group called Kylan, or maybe Kylan, I don't know, it's K-Y-L-A-N. They're a one-person black metal band, and that's about all the information I got from them. This does come from their debut demo disc, so we don't even have a, a proper LP of this, or maybe an EP, I don't know how big the disc is. It is titled Demo 1, MMXXIII, and I'm sure that's Roman numerals, and other than the 23, no, M is a millennium, isn't it? 2023. Okay, because it came out December of 2023. Okay, so Demo Disc 1 from 2023. That's, I kind of like that. That works. Let's dive into this and uh, see what's going on with Kylan. Definitely has the right vibes, the right feel, the right atmosphere. I do like the drumming. Just having that eighth note hit before the beats adds a little bit of rhythmic syncopation that black metal typically doesn't have. Very interesting bluesy aesthetic to this solo.
I do think the production is the most off-putting part. Uh, the symbols are very aggressive. Which is interesting because I think the symbols are fine right here. They feel a bit quieter. But it is a demo and it is black metal, so I don't want to focus too much on the production. Ooh, a little rough on that transition, but I think ultimately it works. I'm digging the experimentation on this. Very interesting. I think it's also it might be the longest song we've ever had for uh, sounds from my inbox. So black metal, I think, undersells it. Yeah, I'm just a one metal 
uh, one man black metal bands. Um, but I, like I said, I think that undersells it. There's doom in here. There's thrash. There's rock. There's death metal. I think at one point, if, if, if we could classify one of those later sections with that, the blackened production sticks with us throughout. And the idea of atmosphere being the most prevalent aspect of the composition but yeah this is very experimental for black metal and i appreciate a lot of that whether it's shifting to a well having syncopation in your drum pattern right in, right in the first section or bringing in the blues rock style guitar solos um the thrashy guitar solos, pure shred that we got at the end. The the was it black and roll? Is that what they call mixing black metal with rock and roll? That we got somewhere in the middle there. Uh, we had a very avant garde section right before the end, where everything just kept getting faster, and the the notion of time was basically thrown out the window. Everybody was doing their own thing, and it was free time in order to make noise. Everything comes together really well here. I think it's an interesting display of this person's compositional chops. There's some groovy bits, there's some chaotic bits, there's some overwhelmingly oppressive bits, uh, and the solo work showcased shred and, you know, like melodic flow and pacing. Um, <laughs> This song kind of has a little bit of everything and then just deep fries it until it's too crispy to chew. And yeah, that's that's Blackened Heart by Kylan. I'm kind of blown away by all of this. It is a, an eclectic combination of sounds I would not generally enjoy on their own and would not have expected to enjoy altogether. It's still not my cup of tea, though I am going to listen to the whole demo now i don't think i'm going to, it's not going to be something i'm going to put on all the time but i am impressed by the eclectic decisions in it and i want to see where the experimentation leads in other tracks i think my only criticism for it would be some of the rougher elements i mentioned the production is a bit rough it's an interesting style of lo-fi not the typical lo-fi i associate with black metal but definitely something that isn't going for high production uh, high fidelity production or spaciousness or cleanliness it's a very gritty sound overall but many times i can hear each individual instrument there is a type of spaciousness in it where the instruments don't bleed over into each other even though it's a highly compressed sound in general there's also some interesting volume decisions going on. I mentioned that the cymbals at that one part were just way too loud, uh, very aggressive sound, but they backed off immediately after, so I'm not sure what happened there. Speaking of volume, I completely forgot that there was volume fluctuation in this track. Uh, we had the one guitar line just hitting the note and then sort of fluctuating in and out of existence. Um, probably with some sort of volume pedal. I thought that was very cool and it adds some dynamics. Again, something I just don't hear too often in black metal. Um, so yeah, the production thing is kind of one. The vocals were interesting. Uh, definitely going for that shrieky style of black metal harsh. Not my cup of tea, but I think it works well in the setting here. The other rough edge I wanted to bring up is just timing in general. There are a couple of transitions in here that I felt just didn't work, sounded like they were going to fall apart. And closer to the end of the track, we saw more and more places where the instruments were out of time with each other. Being that it's one person, everything is recorded track by track, which makes me think that this is either out of frustration, which, trust me, I've been there, you record something a hundred times and each take is getting worse. You're like, screw it, I'm just going to take the... It's not perfect, I'm just going to deal with it. <laughs> um, but it could also be intentional. You know, we listen to a lot of metal bands where 
the fluctuation of time, the lack of rigidity in the temporal aspect is just, uh, you know, it's an aspect of the band. It's something that is their, their characteristic, I suppose you can call it. And that might be what's going on here, which is why it isn't as much of an issue at the beginning of the song where things seem to be more in line temporarily than at the end of the song where things fall apart more often, which could also be read as not just a stylistic choice, but even an artistic one as the song does push towards just complete destruction at that point. As now that I'm thinking back on it retrospectively, we were actually building up to a section where we had that massive accelerando and the song just kept getting faster and time completely fell apart. So this might have even just been a, a musical narrative way to showcase uh, you know, a leading up to this. So that might not even be something to clean up. Like I said, there were a couple of places at the beginning that maybe weren't intentional, but yeah, I am... I'm very intrigued by this. Not my usual stuff, but I can't ignore a, a, a project that just smashes so many ideas together and somehow makes it work. Oh, plus melody, right? Black metal and melody. Don't hear that too often. Uh, like people tell me it happens all the time. I, I have such trouble hearing it. And so I guess that's another point in favor of this is despite some of the uh, production styles, I could still hear the melody in places, which I thought was pretty cool. I'm going to see what the lyrics are like, and then I guess we're going to check out our final band for the day. So this is a song about being so overwhelmed with grief at the loss of a loved one that you you want to follow them. You don't feel like life is full of color anymore. You don't feel like it's worth living. It says, life is a cage. I feel restrained. Uh, flesh without the bone is life without a throne. I think that's an interesting line right there. Uh, second verse says, it doesn't get better. I'm trying to forget her. Uh, all bliss is gone from this world. I wish I could follow because nothing's of worth anymore. Take me back to the start. I'm stuck here with my blackened heart. December 31st, 2023 is when this came out. Just wrap up the year with, uh, with an album job. That's pretty cool. All right, final band. This band is called Monnier. They're a two-piece black metal band, so we're going to follow in a similar theme as Kylan. Interestingly about this, though, is that the songs of this band are sung exclusively in Gaelic, and the lyrics focus on the culture and natural history of Scotland and its indigenous language. This is also a debut EP from this group, and it also came out December of 2023. That was a good month for uh, black metal releases, I suppose. Now, unfortunately, I never quite got a pronunciation for this, and I'm not going to try it, given that the name of the band is in Gaelic, and I couldn't find a pronunciation for it. I doubt that I'd find one for the title of this song. However, you can find the title of it in the description box along with all the information for this band and all bands. You know, I always put every band's social media links and stuff in the description rather than my own links when we do sounds from my inbox. So let's dive into this Monier. See what they're bringing to the table today. Now that is lo-fi. Sometimes you just need a point of reference, I suppose. That last song does not feel lo-fi anymore. <laughs> Thank you. 
Are there two vocalists? I find that interesting. The left channel has consistently been quieter than the right. Auto groove in here, primarily I think from the drums. It's that one beat that comes before the downbeat. It really creates just enough syncopation to be groovy, especially after the straight eighth notes we had previously. So this is the same section we started the song on, right? I recognize the call and response in the vocals as well as this guitar line. Yeah, I am unfortunately the wrong person <laughs> uh, for this. It's it's everything I dislike about the genre, so I'm going to try to be as objective as I can about this because it's just 
<laughs> Whereas, uh, you know, the last one we checked out, the Highland, I was like, you know, it's not my cup of tea, but there's some things in there that are interesting to me. This is just everything I don't typically like about the genre. Um, so I will say, though, that it has a very oppressive style to it. The production, because of all the compression and everything, I can barely make anything out, which also feels a type of antagonistic. It's as if the song doesn't want to be heard. It's disguised behind a veil. The guitars, by the end of it, I could make out some melodies, especially the da -la 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 -la, da -la 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 -la, those big jumps in pitch. I can, I can hear that. <laughs> That's a bit better for me. Um, but you know, the vocals, I don't even know if they're two different vocalists. I hear so little of the natural timbre of them. I just hear that one is a higher pitch scream and one is more of a growl. They have, uh, perceived differences in pitch, uh, and they're placed differently too, but they could be the same person. Like I said, I really don't hear anything about them. I can barely make out any pronunciation on any of the syllables, you know, if, if it hadn't been described to me in the email that they were singing in Gaelic, I would never have known. And you know, that, that, that kind of goes across the board for black metal harshes in general, but the production just obscures it even more. So that's, see, here's the thing too, is that I like the idea of singing in Gaelic, of preserving this language, um, and then also singing about your historical culture. I think that's really cool. Um, I, I just think it's wild that, that it's hidden behind all these layers of obscurity. Um, I'm not, I don't want this to sound like I, I'm throwing shade out uh, at the band. It's, it's more of me throwing shade at this whole production style. <laughs> and I suppose harsh vocals in general. So this probably isn't the greatest look for me being critical this might lean a little bit into the cynical side of things um but you know that that's something i've brought up for other bands as well it's, it's just an interesting decision that if the vocals are so important why make them so hard to hear that's just me though i i don't think it really affects the project much it certainly doesn't affect the sound of the music um, if they had put clean vocals in this type of production and this type of composition and instrumental sound, it definitely probably would have been a, a bit of a mismatch, right? <laughs> that would have sounded a bit odd. So it's the right way to go about making this sound. It just feels like there's a lot of emphasis put on something that probably won't matter for a lot of people because there's a lot of barrier to getting to that meat, which to me is the big point of the band musically there's a lot to uh to dig into here as far as atmosphere i think some of the harmonies that we have in here some of the movements that we have as far as melodic lines are interesting but the song basically moves between two main ideas we have the alternating bass and snare eighth notes idea with that idea on the guitar. Um, and then we have the groovier section, which still follows along with that eighth note picking on the guitars, but uh, shifts up the rhythmic idea on the drums and changes some of the harmonic, or sorry, the melodic ideas on the guitars. But the end result, the atmosphere, doesn't really change much. The A and the B section felt very similar to me. And this is just lo-fi black metal. Like, I, I don't want any of this to feel like criticism towards the band. I, I'm going to make this statement very clear right here. I think as far as a lo-fi black metal song goes, this hits the nail on the head. There's nothing wrong objectively with the song for the style of music that they're trying to create. The execution is spot on for their vision. I think I'm just going to end it there because I stated at the beginning I didn't want to get too objective or too subjective about it. I don't want to get too much into my opinion because this is 100%. I, I'm just not the audience for it. So I think I'll just end with that. That's probably the best feedback I can give about this is that it's executed as close to the vision, I think, as is possible. It sounds, to me at least, indiscernible 
from some of the big bands, the, the big name bands who have created similar music. And that's pretty high praise, I think. Let me see if there's any lyrics to this, and then we'll uh, wrap the video up. I could not find any lyrics. However, I did double check my email, and I missed some pretty cool information about this. The name of the song translates to Twilight, Light Upon the Pine Forest, which I think is pretty cool. There is definitely a nighttime vibe to this, although I think that's just my general reaction to a lot of black metal. I've mentioned even going back two years when we checked out uh, the Futility and Exercises, Exercises and Futility from Ungwa, that the the static and compression of black metal reminds me of TV static. I get a very black and white feel from a lot of black metal. And forests and nighttime, they tend to just go hand in hand with my relationship with a lot of black metal. The only thing the title's missing is a notion of snow. <laughs> I don't know why winter is also something I picture with black metal. It might just be the cold feeling of the production and, you know, the cold of winter. I think that's ex explanatory right there. Uh, this is really cool though. It's a one take demo. Guitar, drums, and vocals with no overdubs. It's straightforward and raw. That it certainly is. Definitely a straightforward song. Very straightforward production. Very raw production. One thing I was going to bring up before I decided to just not go into the realm of criticism too much was much like Kylan, a lack of rhythmic consistency throughout the track. It being a one-take demo, though, makes a lot of sense. The rhythmic in inconsistencies were a lot less often than we saw in Kylan, which made me think that they were just flubs that got left in, but being that it's a single-take recording, yeah, you're going to have flubs. You go back and listen to any of the great recordings when we were still recording on tape, and you're going to hear flubs all over the place. It was just an element of music. Perfect music didn't exist back then. Um, and so I do like that. I don't know if that's their intention moving forward is to always create these one take recordings for their stuff or if they're eventually going to do post-production on it. But uh, I think that is a cool thing that sort of sets them apart is, uh, at least for me, it really exemplifies the endurance, the physical aspect of playing this many notes in a song. And, uh, you know, sometimes you're going to, you're going to make some mistakes doing that because nobody is perfect. It's not just an endurance thing of being able to play this fast for this long, but it's also the consistency of it. No one's perfectly robotic. And so sometimes people are going to play a note just a hair bit earlier, hair bit late, and those do show up in this track. But I think it does add to the character of it. All right, those are my thoughts on Jetpack, Lickspielhaus, Kylin, and Monier. Let me know your thoughts, though. Did you enjoy any of this? Which songs were your favorites? Which songs or bands are you going to be looking more into? Was there anything you'd like to add on to what I said about any of this, or just give me your thoughts, opinions, and perspectives? Above the comment section, I'll put all that stuff in the comments. Above that is the description box. Usually I'd put my links in there, but instead I'm going to put links to all of the bands, our social medias, merch, websites, streaming platforms, everything I can find so that if you enjoyed anything today, you can easily access more of it. Uh, above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three. If you head on over to any of their pages, like, subscribe, thumbs up, heart, whatever it is, um, show them some love from this community. That wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. UTC as usual. We're going to check out some brand new music. Yeah, both of our videos tomorrow. It's going to be new music, which I'm pretty stoked about. I think we've got some cool things coming up. I know the bands for both of them, so I'm stoked to check them out. So let's <laughs> put it that way. 
Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Thank you.